Hey everyone, this is the SIGOC meeting for January 31st, 2024. Um, I think we got a few items on the agenda and I think today we have a demo, which is always very exciting. Uh, so Kevin, I see you are on the call. Um, I have already made you co-host if you would like to share your screen or anything like that. I can stop sharing. Um, I think you should be able to share. Okay, so hopefully you can see the presentation now. Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, allowing us to present here. Um, we're from a company called uh, GetUp. We are behind uh, Cell Playground, and we really just want to demo this to you and, and get some feedback. We have a few people on the call from GetUp. Uh, myself, Kevin Connor, Matthias, who's the lead developer of Cell Playground. Uh, Diane's also on the call. Uh, I know that we have uh, Camila and a couple of other people on the call as well. So there are a few people here from, from GetUp. Um, so let's talk about Cell Playground. Uh, the inspiration of this for Cell Playground really came from a discussion that happened on Slack uh, and a couple of other places, but that's really where it started. Matthias had been working with Cell in one of our other projects, Marvin. And he really wanted to get a better understanding of Cell and what it was capable of within a kind of easy to use uh, environment. We, we have playgrounds for other things, but nothing really existed for Cell. So that was the instigation of the, the project. It was uh, really the, the, the uh, kind of where, this, the, where it jump started. So what is Cell? Uh, essentially, it's a, a playground which is delivered in the browser. It's written in WASM, so we integrate Cell. Uh, we pull it in from Go, we create the WASM, we deploy it. It allows us to uh, easily test expressions, to play around with expressions, to learn Cell. Uh, we can even share, uh, and uh, Matthias will show this later on, but it's easy enough to share links to the environment so that you can actually share what you're doing with other people. And hopefully it's going to help people avoid mistakes and not put something into uh, production environments or development environments that are, are not really satisfying their, their needs. We did present to SIG API Machinery back in October. Uh, so there is a top there. And uh, we have uh, since then had feedback uh, from Jordan, from CC on this. And Jordan opened an, uh, uh, an issue with uh, some areas that we can use to expand in. Uh, so with that, we're just going to go and uh, go do a quick demo of uh, Play Cell before we come back. Oh, sorry, Cell Playground before we come back. And I'm going to hand that over to Matthias to drive. Oh, okay. Uh, let me show you. So the Cell Playground, it's available at playcell.gentistro.io. And in this area, we, we write our cell expressions. And we have also some examples here. Uh, Kubernetes examples and other li cell libraries examples. And let me choose one. Uh, for example, this cell expression checks the host part field of containers of a deployment and the variables of the cell expressions we should de declare here. Uh, in this case, all the deployment objects is inside this object variable and we access it here, okay? And just, just a minute. Okay. Um, and we can run the experiment here. And in this case, for our validating admission policy um, scenario, uh, this deployment should be not allowed and we can, change the examples, the, the deployment, the expressions, and quickly test here, okay? And we can see also syntax error. Let me, for example, uh, not found variable, we can see the error here. Um, uh, we can also see the, the cost of their expressions. Um, Oh, this is my next page yeah. here. Oh, okay. 
and here we can see the cost of observe expressions and uh, that's it it's a simple project and we can um, share our experiments uh, both the cell expression and the input data by clicking here and sending the the link to the everyone and yeah that's it so so one of the things we'll, we will also show you is where we're, we're headed so as you can see from this screen, uh, everything on the right here is is kind of fabricated. It's not natural for what we we deal with. So uh, this is really where we're headed. Um, we, this is part of an experiment that we did back end of last year, uh, which we have to continue. Uh, we've been slightly busy with releases since then, but the idea is that we're moving to an environment where we can actually deal with the resources that we use on a day to day. So we're not having to make things up. Uh, so this has got a validating admission policy on the left-hand side. You can put your deployment there. You can even put the original content there. And we're going to extend this with uh, other areas as well, such as authorization and, and the like as we move forward. But running this will give us the same, uh, excuse me, will give us the same output. We have to do a better uh, formation, a uh, better job at formatting that, uh, sorry, formatting that, but that will come in time. So as you can see, if we come down here, this one is specifically looking for replicas. If we change the replicas there, run it again, now we're getting true back as the, the result. So it's the same idea as the first one, but hopefully a more natural fitting to what it is, to, to the resources that we're using on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so that's really cell. That's what it is that we're doing. Uh, that's where we're, we're kind of heading at the moment. Uh, roadmap, uh, obviously we are intending to flesh out more of the Kubernetes use cases. So validating admission policy, finish that. Uh, validating web configuration, CRD validations, authorization match conditions. We're also looking to uh, other CNCF projects who use Cell, and we're going to try and pull as many of that into Cell Playground as possible. Uh, get as, really try and get as broad a support as we can for CNCF projects. Uh, one of the, another area that we want to look at is actually get, pulling information from live clusters so that we can pull it down and we can test our own information that, that's live there. We are looking at uh, trying to find a place for this within CNCF, either as a sandbox or a subproject. Uh, and uh, Diane's been driving that uh, with uh, the help of people like Cece. Uh, so hopefully at some point we'll see this in CNCF <laughs> uh, once we, we've actually managed to... Uh, uh, to find a place for it once we, we found a place that we think it, it would be a good fit. So what are we looking for here? Uh, really, it's the same as uh, the API machinery uh, team when we, we worked with, with with them. It's really looking for feedback. Uh, first, on uh, Cell Playground as it currently looks. Uh, second, on uh, any enhancements that you think might be missing, especially if they're related to use cases for the SIG auth. Uh, so, uh, we want to try and capture as much as we can so that we can work on it and, and uh, try and address uh, as many of your use cases as you have. Uh, and also, if you want to become a contributor, then we would obviously welcome that. We're an open source project. Uh, we're also, you know, obviously looking to be in CNCF, uh, and any, we will welcome contributions from anybody. So uh, please give us your feedback. Uh, this is where you do it. It's under the Undistro uh, organization. There's a self playground. Uh, repository in there and just create an issue. Uh, Jordan CC have already helped us in this uh, and hopefully others uh, within the, the group will as well. Uh, so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, then we'd be, uh, we're certainly willing to take uh, take up time now, but uh, I also understand you have a very busy schedule. So if you don't want to do that, that's up, that's up to you. Uh, but that's that's where we are. Cool, thank you for that. Um, before we do anything else, does do does anyone else on the call have like feedback or questions or thoughts or concerns that they would like to share right now? Uh, this is really cool. Uh, Just oh, sorry. Sorry. quick, quick question. I there, I think I saw you present an example where you had QBML on the left side. Just how did you get to that? I'm just playing with the playground right now. Sorry, which example was on the left side? I think uh, I thought there was an example where, where, with like the validating admission config. Um, oh, the 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 future direction. 
that's future. Okay, I was I was just curious uh, if I could get to that in the current one. That URL was localhost, so I'm assuming. It, it's localhost. I'm running it locally. We haven't deployed it. Uh, however, there is a pull request open in the the repo from I think November or December last year. Uh, the only thing I've done since then is rebase it on the current uh, main branch. Uh, but you can you can certainly check out the repo and run it from the repo, and you'd be able to play around with that. Awesome. It doesn't do. There, there are still lots of gaps with that that we're hoping to uh, to fill out as quickly as we can. Now that we've, we we just did a release over the last few days, which was really what we've been uh, fighting with for the last kind of month or so. Uh, now that that's out of the way, we're hoping to get some time to actually catch up with some of these things. Got it. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Uh, do you plan to add support for optional values? Sorry, add support for optional values. Optional value. Uh, yeah. Yes. If 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 you, if there's the use cases you can think of, just create issues for them. Please go to the uh, the re, uh, go to the uh, repository and just add an issue there. Uh, document what it is that you want us to to add, and we'll we'll do our best to get it in as quickly as possible. Sounds good. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, just to, on that last topic, um, so that proposal that's linked in chat, the cell proposal for optional values, um, I think in order for the cell playground to support it, the the Go cell compiler and suite would have to support it. At, it um, supports it. Go 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 compiler supports it. Right. So I, maybe it already works. Like I don't know if you I tested it. It doesn't work on the UI at least. Oh, you yeah. have to like when you create the cell environment in Go, you have to add it as like, hey, this environment also supports optional types. I think something like that. So that might yeah. not be done yet. Yeah. Okay. But so what I would, well, we can get that in uh, probably fairly quickly. But what I would ask is if if you go to the the issues page and create the issue, and then we'll work on it. Yep, we'll do. Thanks. Thank you very much. Just to add on that, um, yeah, great demo first and. Uh, um, the optional values like are supported in Kubernetes at like a thirteen uh, version, for example, one point uh, thirty nine and above. And the question, a follow up question, actually regarding on that, because we plan to like keep maybe like in the future keep adding like functions libraries into Kubernetes regarding with cell. Uh, is there a plan like uh, on cell playground side to like keep sync of this or like or how the process it works, or should we just go ahead and create issues on the cell playground repo? Just to keep think of what. Uh, like, so the the, an, the answer is both. If you know that something is missing, please create an issue. Uh, other than that, I will be at the uh, and and Mateus will be attending as well at the uh, the API machinery cell meetings on the the Tuesdays. So every second Tuesday, we'll be attending that. So we'll try and keep track of everything that's going on within that group as well. Thank you. But yeah, I mean, back to back to the, the, the first thing there, please create issues if you see something's missing or if there's a direction that you would like us to go in, we're, we're very keen to get moving and get as much support for the uh, Kubernetes use cases as we can. We are considering uh, whether cell could be a good format um, for an API that's being proposed. Uh, that's part of the discussion topics. Uh, of this meeting as well, uh, reference grant. You might have seen that um, potentially. Uh, yes, I've I've seen it. I don't know a great deal about it yet, but it's on our radar for something to look at. Yeah, with the with the current use in the authorizers, like uh, we're running those cell expressions, you know, on like a uh, every every matching request, right? Uh, and this would be not in that part of the hot path of the API server, but rather in a controller that's constantly watching large numbers of objects. So uh, in order to extract information from those objects. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, I, I mean, again, uh, as I said to the, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to mispronounce your name here, but Vinyak, I, th I think, uh, as I said to him, uh, if you would like to create an issue within the repository, then we can track it there as well. And at least we won't uh, forget about it. So close enough. Thank you very much. You're very kind. So 
Okay, well, thank you very much for the time. Thank you for giving us your time. So I was just going to make a quick comment. It's already in Jordan's um, I issue that he had made, uh, uh, but it's the uh, authentication stuff. So I know you explicitly called out authorization, but I personally care deeply about the authentication stuff since uh, I happen to be working on it. Uh, so it'd be great. Okay. <laughs> so that bump, that's just bumped up the list. No, you don't have to bump it up, but don't forget about it because then I'll be really sad. <laughs> oh no, Jordan was very was uh, very kind to uh, add an issue after we did the uh, the previous demonstration. Uh, so yeah, we it, it's definitely on the list of things to do. Yeah. Uh, overall, though, I'm I'm very excited for this. Uh, uh, as uh, Anish and I went through all the unit tests for the authentication stuff, that was painful. Like getting getting it to behave exactly like we expected. Like, there was a few times where we wrote something that appeared to work but didn't actually do what we thought we did uh so that was yeah i, I think it'll be very good uh, uh i guess i should share my screen again all right so i think if we're ready to move to the next topic uh so rob said he couldn't join uh and so does uh lucas so neither one of them is here uh, Jordan, you might have the most context out of all of us. I made the mistake of reading the cap yesterday, right before Rob updated it a bunch. So now, <laughs> now I don't have any idea what's in the cap because I have had too many meetings between this morning to actually read it again. Uh, That's funny. Um, it yeah. does not feel funny to me. It doesn't, this does not feel funny. This feels wrong. <laughs> I, that's what you get for reviewing a design on a random day, the day before someone pushes a big revision of it. Um, this has gone through a few iterations. The current state, I think, incorporates feedback from David and from myself. Uh, I can give a one minute summary of this. Uh, there are two actors it uh, envisions. The user who sits in a namespace who knows the local resources they want to grant access to, uh, but they don't know who they should grant them to, like the identity they should grant them to. They know, I want to make this secret available for the purpose of this gateway out somewhere, but I have no idea what controller identity is going to be getting my secret. Um, so the object they would use to grant that is a reference grant object where they say, I want to grant access to this named secret from this namespace in this gateway. That's all I know. The second actor is the admin who is setting up the controller who's going to be responsible for dealing with gateways. They know the identity of the controller, and they know the objects it should service, like these gateway objects, but they don't know all the secrets and thing services out in the random namespaces. So the admin creates a cluster reference consumer that says, here's the subjects, here's the resources it's responsible for, these gateway resources, and here's the types of resources that it should have access to. Uh, there's some extra dimensions like the purpose, uh, like if, when one uh, one thing in reference objects for multiple purposes, like for TLS or for re-encryption or for like whatever. So that's a little extra detail. And then uh, the authorizer looks at uh, the things that have been granted and the things that uh, the subjects that have been granted and sort of matches those up on the dimensions that are specified. Um, so that when this controller, the contour system controller, actually looks at a gateway, says it references this secret. Let me go try to get that secret. It is authorized specifically for that secret if it was granted via a reference grant. So it's multiple actors, none of whom have all the knowledge required to set up like traditional RBAC roles. Uh, some of the changes that Rob just pushed um, were to make the from and the to aspects expressed in terms of uh, group and resource. 
so that you don't have to like chase from one object to another to understand what's being granted. So like you can look at this, the cluster reference consumer and see, oh, I'm going from this resource to this resource. Um, you can look at the reference grant and see, oh, I'm granting access from this resource in this namespace to these named resources of this type in my own namespace. Uh, so the, the what is being uh, granted or what you're matching on is expressed in the object itself instead of a pointer to another object that you may or may not be able to see that like has other information. That dimension change was the main update that Rob just I, I will admit, I don't know if I just understood what you just said, Jordan. Like, I don't know exactly what dimension you just said changed, but David, if you want, you want to go. Uh, yeah, one of the things I noticed on first read and, and I commented on it to Rob as well, um, there is a description of of API for how we will describe uh, this permission. There is a description of what permission sh this should allow. There is not a discussion of how we will actually authorize that permission. Um, I'm, uh, I'm trying to work out whether this is considered implementable without that aspect of it. Uh, and and whether like, they just miss it maybe in the cap. To Jordan. I'm sorry. sorry. Uh, some ideas about this. Uh, sorry to hop in, David and Jordan. Okay. Um, and I think that that is probably the most um uh, that that's an important half of this problem to specify. Uh, right now, since the approach is for the KEP to try this stuff out of tree, um, like it's a we we've got an, a mixture of API client library stuff that will be easy for controllers to put in, um, and then like a mixture of sort of using impersonation uh, to create more specific principles. Uh, or like basically just like really hyper specific usernames, uh, and then uh, yeah, like uh, using the a webhook to make sure that people have the permissions that they need to actually create these grants, um, and those three things uh, together use kind of what's existing in Kubernetes through its extension mechanisms to kind of get this behavior to work uh but then the the thought would be like if we need uh an authorizer you know inside of the api server uh we we could probably squeeze some performance uh out of it and make the implementation a lot cleaner and a lot less fragile and also like have it be a, a very clearly supported api that's synchronized with kubernetes versioning that people don't have to install themselves and we don't have to figure out like what controllers need to do when the API gets uninstalled and stuff like that. Um, so like that's like as far as how to implement. And then we have a bunch of ideas then, but we also have concerns like this will probably always have some level of eventual consistency, just like RBAC. Um, and right now, you know, uh, controllers already kind of have full access uh, to all of the secrets across the cluster, as an example, right? And they just are able to go and get it as soon as they think that they should go and get it. Uh, but now um, having some sort of watch, you know, and then like calculating and pulling all of the names of things using the same namespace grant is going to take some time. Uh, and how fast we can get the authorizer, authorizer to like allow access to those resources. Like we're unsure if this is gonna be a significant behavioral or timing change uh, for controllers that's going to wreak havoc across the ecosystem. So there's like also a bunch of thinking required there uh, and performance testing uh, to make sure that this is actually something that we can, you know, ask controller authors to include. 
Yeah, so I'm I'm not what I'm looking at and uh, when I look at this is the API for using it. That's one aspect, right? Does that API look good? Can I understand it? Uh, does it have control with the right point, right? But uh, another aspect is how do we actually implement it, right? Like I know trying to develop something out of tree so you can try it is very valuable, right? Um, but if we were to embed this API in cube, we would need to include something to make that real. And I do think that the choices that we make will be sticky, right? So if we do choose, for instance, to say, we're going to implement this by creating individual RBAC roles and role bindings, right? That's likely to end up sticky because if you were to change it, uh, you would break someone who was trying to decide it, who has access to see this resource, right? Um, there are projects that do this. Um, and having it work and then breaking it is different than this capability is net new. And if you choose to use it, it causes that problem. Um, there's also people who have uh, tooling that will go out and you know, what if somebody adjusts an, an RBAC role, for instance? There's repercussions there. Um, I guess I would like to know before saying we're going to implement it, before putting the APIs in the Cube API server, I would like to know how we are going to actually build that authorizer. And and that's that's not trying to raise a barrier, right? Like it's, I'm in favor of this. I like the idea of it. But before adding those types to Core Cube, I think it's very reasonable to say, how are we going to authorize it? Let's make a real choice. Uh, Jordan, no, Mike. I think in relation to that, in my head, this was always going to be implemented in the same way that like the node authorizer is, like to Michael's comment in the chat, that we would have an internal bespoke implementation probably based on like some kind of in-memory cache of the relevant objects, but there would be no RBAC that you could observe this behavior from. But I, I agree that that should be stated as like a design choice uh, somewhere. In the uh, cache. Did you say that there would be no RBAC that you could observe or that there would be? There would not be. Okay, yeah. So like, North, uh, like node authorizer, like through and through. That makes uh, sense to me. It's what I would, I think that would give us the greatest flexibility. Um, but I wouldn't want to go through then an intermediate state where an alpha does create those RBAC resources. Because then we end up in a spot where we're trying to figure out what we do with them on a cluster. I think as somebody involved with the POC uh, in like trying to do this with what's existing, uh, I'd, I'd be fine being like, hey, this is the out of tree that's like, a, oh, this feels good. Uh, but if we want to bring it in tree, then we say, you know, no to using our back as a interstitial thing. I'm fine with that, right? Uh, but that would mean that the types would not be baked into core cube until we had such an authorizer, right? Like you could start, but we wouldn't expose them. Does that make sense? And then I think having a separate authorizer, we would also need to make plans for how we would try to enable this API, right? So authorizers are optional. Um, RBAC is optional. This new one would likely have to be optional. Uh, would it behave like RBAC where you would create resources and they would be inoperative? That's an option. Uh, would we return warnings off of that? That's a neat option we didn't have when we first developed it. Um, would we return errors? I don't know. What warning? The entire, entire API system doesn't work because the author. I, yeah, I, I'm just exploring <laughs> ideas that like when we did it, our back, when we did our back, we were much smaller. Um, and Jordan went to every single person in the ecosystem and created their little roles for them. Uh, and there were only like 400 of them. So we didn't feel too bad for them. Um, and it so broke me. <laughs> <laughs> it made me who I am today. Uh, so, so again, like I'm, I'm looking and saying like, we could agree on these types, 
but the act of actually adding them to the QAPI server needs to handle the second what you do with them and describe what we need to do. And you know, if we don't get there for an alpha, I would actually be okay with that. But I am I don't want to have that intermediate state that isn't what we want. Yeah, the question about what it, do we enable the API if the authorizer is inactive is a really good question. Um, if RBAC is optional, like what do we, what's our strategy there? Um, RBAC is optional, but it is enabled everywhere that you care about. So, well, like yes, I mean, practically, but <laughs> wouldn't you want this like also everywhere? I, I think it would be like RBAC and like, the node authorizer. In practice, it's really useful. And so I would not expect anyone like Cube Adam, current managed providers, I would expect everyone to use this, but nothing would take a hard, nothing in tree would take a hard dependency on it. So that if you started a cluster without it, core stuff would just not work. That means it can't be part of it. Uh, right. Lucas has a comment in the cap um, talking about uh, existing places where we have like implicit um, access to secrets within the same namespace uh, because of the structure of like say the pod API uh, and how that's authorized kind of being different and whether or not people are going to find that confusing, you know, because you need say a cluster reference grant same name space pattern thing you know for these objects like http routes or you know uh, something storage related or something you know a, a, an add-on like flux using it but then pods it's a different authorizer that doesn't need these objects um that's that's kind of to the comment about like he he asks, is is there a future, you know, where we use this for something like pods? Yeah, yeah. That's, that's it sounds like the answer question, would be no. right? Like what would the migration path be? Like, do we have to let people turn this on on like a resource by resource or controller by controller basis and opt into it if we want to adopt it for core things? I mean, there are some examples, right? Like PVs and PVCs maybe involve some cross namespace references. Um I do think we have an option of saying similar to like we do for the node authorizer, if you, well, actually the node authorizer is more restrictive than the RBAC that we gave you. So mm -hmm. actually it's not a good example. This is, this is less restrictive. Hmm. This yeah, is the, the node it's authorizer. More, more flexible, but it is still more restrictive, right? You're taking a controller that has explicit. Well, well, no, it's, it's, it's on, less, it's more restrictive like, if you delete the RBAC. Right. You're taking a controller that has implicit access on, say, all secrets in the cluster, and you're scoping it down to secrets granted via reference grants. Um, it's more so, flexible because you decoupled the, the, the user and the admin a little bit, but it's still a permission reduction, right? So it's potentially breaking. And it, it's to... not So anyone deploy, deploying with RBAC today, like upgrading doesn't remove the RBAC rules. Like today, if someone deploys- Oh, you're right. OK, so that's the path. You you yeah. deploy your reference grants, and then you remove the RBAC. And yeah, OK. Yeah, that's so actually an interesting question, is like, if there's RBAC that says you have access to everything, and then we have some sort of authorization header for the purpose that's passed on the request, it's like, I once the purpose is there, do we? ignore our back and only go for reference grant at that point i think that i would keep our authorizer behavior as if someone allows and then we haven't had an explicit deny first it's allowed which would mean that our back would still authorize a request so this wouldn't so your reference grant stuff could all be installed you know and then you're you can kind of double check with some linters or something that everything looks like it's correct and then you you turn off that that cluster role binding, and then like you were, you delete the cluster role binding and see if things if your controller starts complaining. Yep, sounds good to me. Yeah, so I think in relation to that, 
would we take a similar path to what we do with controllers entry where we have bootstrap manifests for all the RBAC that they need and we apply them to the cluster if RBAC is enabled? Is there a path where we could have bootstrap um, reference grant artifacts that we apply to the cluster? Um, for what objects? Ingress is a core uh, API that currently... Ingress doesn't allow cross namespace references. Yeah, but the same namespace stuff is one of the big targets uh, for reference grants. Yeah, so let's pretend in hypothetical future, I had some ingress controller that was literally built into core and I want to authorize it to read TLS secrets based on ingress objects. How would I do that? Um, if the controller was built into core and we, so today we don't have a RBAC role that grants secret read access to an ingress controller. So we wouldn't have a bootstrap cluster reference grant thing that tried to grant secret access to ingress controllers. Like we, we don't have that today. So whoever's deploying the ingress controller sets up the permissions for it. Today, they do that with a nasty global secret read role realistically. And so whoever's deploying the ingress controller knows the identity of the ingress controller. When they wanted to transition to this system, they would set up a cluster reference. That's grant. Interesting because it feels a little bit different to um, Gateway API because um, like you were talking before about how there's kind of grantors and then there's consumers, right? The controllers and like the people who own the resources in the namespace, right? But then particularly with the cluster reference grant or the cluster reference pattern or whatever we call it, like that is almost always going to be owned by whoever the API owner is. So like if it's gateway API or, or something storage related or Flux, um, which are kind of like our three like users aside from Ingress. So like Ingress is the API uh, and it's the versioning strategy of the Ingress API or the gateway API and the structure and knowledge of that API that just like determines what paths for which versions need to be put in there so that the consumers yeah. don't have to know that part. Yeah, you're you're right. Sorry, there, I forgot there were three objects. The, the the consumer, the one that has the subject information, that's mm -hmm. up to the admin setup. The the cluster reference grant, the thing that says here's the field path and the type and the resource it grants access to. That's on the API owner to set up. So for that, for ingress, we probably would have a bootstrap object. Sorry, I I misparsed the question. So whether or not it's being consumed is on the whether or not it's being installing. consumed. So yeah. So yeah. saying ingresses can reference secrets if they're in the same namespace, that should be like the bootstrap. We object. define the ingress API in tree. We should define the pattern in tree mm -hmm. it says here's the field in the ingress that references a secret and anyone if the admin sets up uh, a controller to consume those references it should have access to them so yeah we, we probably would have uh bootstrap objects maybe for ingress api i don't i don't know if we have any other in tree apis like that we have some crd based ones for like storage snapshot uh, volume snapshot stuff. We would take the same path we do for the bootstrap RBAC, where if RBAC is enabled, we're like, cool, we're going to go bootstrap that stuff for you because we're assuming you're going to use it. Uh, and Maybe, probably. Uh, this, this gets back to David's question about, like, do we, <clears throat> if the authorizer is not enabled, do we expose the API? Yes or no. And if we expose the API, and the authorizer is not enabled, do we create these any bootstrap objects that make sense? Ingress is the only one I can think of, honestly, right now. We we expose RBAC if the authorizer isn't enabled, right? Because it's a GA API. And... Yes, but we it's do, but me whether it, I made the right choice. Yeah, I, I'm not sure we should have done that. 
we didn't really think about it at the time and we are thinking about it now okay i yeah i mean i I guess if RBAC is not enabled, do you want the manifest to get applied and do nothing? Or do you just want the act of applying them to just hard fail because the resource doesn't exist? Um, I'd like to make an explicit choice. I haven't pre-decided yeah. which way I think is most reasonable. We also have the option of warnings that we did not have in the past. Um, yeah. Maybe we could leverage them. Uh, to the particular names, I think I had a comment on the cap asking about whether there was going to be a specific name pattern where we would reserve a certain slice of names for ourselves. Uh, an example of this would be the CRD API, where if you create an API that lives in the Kubernetes uh, Kates.io group, the Kubernetes IO or Kates, I have to look up each time. Uh, but if you are underneath that group, you have to have an annotation that says, uh, yeah, I really am supposed to be added here. Here's where my approval came in. Um, that's decently lightweight, fairly easy to do. And if we name things carefully, we could actually reserve a slice of the space of names for ourselves. Sorry, David, the criteria there, I'm taking notes, is we reserve a slice of resource names for yeah, so we could reserve everything with a particular suffix or prefix. So, uh, for instance, we tried to do this with the resource quota API, and you choose the name of the thing you're quoting, um, but we never actually built a way to enforce that people didn't squat in a particular place. Uh, so OpenShift did a couple naughty things back in the day. Um, if we want to avoid that here, we could say that we recommend names contain the end of your group, for instance, and if the end of your group, and so if the name has dot Kubernetes dot IO and it ends with that, you have to have this annotation. It's fairly lightweight. Don't want to raise a huge barrier to it. I want to make an explicit choice when we go through to do that. Because these get listed and people have to decide what to grant. Maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't, but we don't want them to conflict, right? Like it would be really upsetting for us, I imagine, if we went to go add a new um a new name and it failed because argo cd claimed it um so let's drop our back object names yeah well, i mean and we structure those names but we have when there's a conflict it sucks yeah uh, i want to ask since we're still talking a bit about our back so when you do like a self rules review, it'll give you basically the RBAC rules that apply to you. I assume none of that will work for this authorizer's rules. Just like node authorizer, correct. And webhook authorizer. That makes Since me fast. But like you can see why I didn't want to have, you don't want to go through that intermediate state because people are like, oh, this works. And then, oh, we get to beta and it doesn't work. Why did that fail? That would I feel like work. that would be frustrating to not have something that allows you to do something like a subject access review. Um, a subject access review will work, but an no. enumeration of every permission you have via this uh, the rules list. Okay. Yeah. I can't think um, of a good reason someone would need that. And I don't really want them to have a thing I can't understand why they would need and think they would misuse. Like the things they need are to be authorized and to know whether a particular reference should be allowed. And for that, they're supposed to use the reference grant. Yeah, but mm -hmm. what if I want to know what a controller can do on my cluster. Like without learning everything about Kubernetes, if I just wanted to be like the foo controller in this namespace, what does it what can it do right now? With our back, like, yeah, you can read all secrets. Well, that's concerning. Uh, but at least I know. Now it'll say it can't read it, it can't do anything, but it actually can read a ton of secrets because it has access to a bunch of TLS secrets. Yeah. Like if our back was the interstitial state there, like it actually was the implementation detail, like we could have it spit out resource names. Yeah, I, I think the scale doesn't work to make our back the interstitial state. I yeah. just don't want to have that intermediate state and take it away. Right. So I, what I don't want to do is create this. Someone looks at it in alpha or beta and says, this is amazing. I can see what they're all doing. 
Uh, and, and then we go to GA and man, we made it so perform. We're proud of ourselves. And man, we nuke the world when we do it for integrations. Um, so I, I'm okay with a multitude of intermediate states. I think writing our own authorizer or with a multitude of implementations, I think writing our special authorizer is the best choice, but I can't get behind switching far away. How do we, sorry, first time at SIGOF meeting, how do we normally time box our discussions? Like, do we need to get we're, to we're, the... we're bad. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I will nag Jordan tomorrow about my other items. So key question so we can... that I have, are you looking to try to get this with, are you trying to look to get this implemented in alpha in 130? And if so, I think it's critical to figure out how we're going to authorize it. If you are not, that's fine, but you should be aware of it, right? Yeah, I, I don't have enough uh, mind melding and, and syncing with Rob to be like, yes, we are going to be able to implement an authorizer, you know, by the time we're getting all of this stuff across the line. <laughs> uh, so an option that we don't, I don't think we've done before, um, would it be useful to merge types behind an alpha gate that was locked to false? I don't think we've ever done that before. But uh, like, uh, we I, really try not to merge APIs before the implementation, just because we often find that is fair. That is fair to me. I um, I, I don't think that we need this API in core, and that we need to be versioning it until we have an implementation. Okay. Um, then, so. I think more of my question was around whether we will make 130, but I don't think that there's a desire uh, that it doesn't make sense to me, at least maybe Rob disagrees. Um, but like, we, we don't need this API in core unless something else can really actually enforce the implementation is my opinion. Okay. That works for me. Uh, I, I think we're wanting to make progress on it, not get stuck. And so having specific questions to go answer and come back with answers for, um, helps us make forward progress. Uh, I think it's unlikely that we will answer all the questions and know enough about the authorizer shape in the next like four business days, but um, we'll see. Uh, when Rob and I talked, I gave him a lot of feedback around like how we tested and scaled things for the node authorizer, like benchmark testing and sort of defining what the envelope was that it could handle in terms of memory and CPU and performance and indexing. And um, so he added some of those details like in terms of requirements, but didn't get into like implementation specifics. Okay. Yeah, I really wish I was able to join that meeting with you and Rob Jordan, um, because I, I would like to be in, in sync on um, some of the like benchmark planning that we're going, going to need to do and like what the limitations are. It sounds like we removed the whole pattern cross namespace thing. I don't know if that's a performance thing. It certainly feels like a usability and simplicity thing, but uh, like the names uh, reference grants, like don't have to follow a path, right? It's just like names, just whoever owns that, just say what you want, right? Um, I'm, I'm, let's sync offline. I don't want to eat the whole meeting. Uh, just picking yeah. offline, we, we can talk through some of the thinking behind that. Um, but I do want okay. to give five minutes if there was anything else we wanted to mm -hmm. mention or surface. Uh, if, if you, I, I don't know if we're, ha if we're having API review tomorrow, we can just talk about this tomorrow. And I am totally fine talking about these later. Um, so, Cece, are you still here? Did you want to talk about this? Oh yeah. Um, I guess this can go offline as well. Like if people have opinions on the issue itself, but basically, uh, we're planning to uh promote the valid information policy to GA um this release, and I want to bro uh brought the topic of do we have any exp any resource we want to be explicitly exp excluded from the valid information uh interception. The idea uh initially uh come from like the Jordan's proposal earlier. Uh, um, certain um, um, like auth related uh, resources. So I I just want to check if people has like opinions on this or if we want to kind of give the flexibility to user to let them um, decide. 
or if we want to hard code the the excluded resources within a uh, validation image policy. Yeah. I think this is a good idea. I maybe Jordan can remind me here. I remember that token reviews didn't work for a while with um, validating admission webhooks. And then they, they started working because we fixed the registry or something. Yeah, they didn't work, but not for a principled reason. They didn't right. work because like synthetic resources and sub resources were not, we hadn't wired up admission in a principled way. And so when we fixed that, we found a bunch of sub resources where admission also didn't work and that was bad. So we like wired it up in a principled way and added a test to say everything goes through admission regardless. And didn't really think about whether virtual resources like subject access review and token review, especially virtual resources that were essential to like certain parts of the cluster working, even for read requests, uh, whether those were good to route through admission. Um, and in hindsight, I don't think it was good. When we talked about excluding these, hard coding excluding these from uh, admission webhooks, the argument was made like people are depending on these, they're GA, like we shouldn't change GA functionality, even if it doesn't make sense and people can break their clusters, uh, which I'm not sure I agree with. But um, before we go to GA, I would like to make a bid for not making the same mistake with validating admission policy. How would we choose future resources to add to this list? Things that are not actually persisted seem like a good first set. So admission, one of the main reasons was like, don't let bad stuff get persisted in the system. So these don't actually persist anything. Uh, second, APIs that are used, uh, like breaking them can also break read paths. So um, here, if you break this, you're not just keeping something from getting persisted. You're not just breaking the writer. The fact that it is modeled as a write is sort of fake. Like it's not really a write, it just got modeled as a write. So it happens to be going through admission. Um, and by rejecting this downstream, you are actually like breaking someone's read attempt possibly. So those those two, the intersection of those two things seems like something I would not want to let admission break, I think. So it would be nice to, uh, no disagreement with those particular items. Uh, we represent a large portion of the people that would be adding APIs, so that's good for now, um, but explaining to people how they would i don't even know where we'd be able to put it just because like if if somebody adds something and they mess up uh they're gonna have the same discussion that we had with the admission web books um my only comment there um maybe a to do is look at the place where we test i think we have we have a test that exercises every resource that gets served through admission uh I think we have to do special things with that test for virtual resources. I'm not sure. Um, and so maybe putting comments there or putting some aspect of that under review or pointing at the docs for this so that like when you add a new thing, if you have to make changes in that area, like you get notified or the reviewer could gets we, notified, this is a thing to consider. Could we actually make the test require that all virtual resources do this? Do we have any virtual resource that we do want to run this for? I mean, we already have the same logic in the etcd storage pad test. It won't, it won't yell at you. At a virtual well, I just want to try to have us like do the right thing as close to by default as we can. Yeah, so we can we easily can see what's virtual because you can create and you can't get. So we yes, can... I know we can. That's in discovery, right? So yeah. could we actually make the test say all virtual resources cannot be controlled by this? Uh, and then if somebody later adds one that they say, yeah, I really have to have this, let them figure out how they're going to let, let future Jordan figure out how to do that. Yeah. That sounds um, like a good idea. That would be easier. So. Okay. That's, that's a concrete to do. Um, 
<laughs> to, to your question, Lee, how do we do it time boxing in this meeting? Badly. That's how we do. <laughs> Uh, and I still have plenty of questions about reference grant stuff. So, yeah. I'm, we I think that Bob, a I'm a discussion in fewer topics than a shallow discussion on all of them. Yeah. Reminder that kept freeze is next Tuesday. So, if there's stuff you want to progress for 130, we actually have a lot of things in flight that I think can progress pretty easily. Like, um, but don't forget about doing that so um, Hold on. Next Tuesday? Tuesday. Uh, i was fairly certain it was the ninth jordan um, thursday thursday, thursday jordan. not tuesday don't scare us like that we taking away two of our days oh sorry sorry no that's good i thought i thought it was tuesday sorry next thursday but if i scared you into going faster then that's exactly what i meant to do <laughs> all right i gotta drop all right take care folks well